so here we are. No flash going, see, and so I'm showing you stones without any um, light. The light behind me is a um, north-facing window. Um, and we are approaching sundown, so it's, it's kind of dim in here. All right, but I'm going to show you the three laser tests. A clear diamond will glow the color, the same color as the light that's exciting it. So you can get it to glow all three colors. Well, look at that. It really amplifies the light. It's much um, stronger coming off of that diamond than it is. Um, coming out of the end of my laser thing there. Okay, and so... And red's probably the easiest one to, to check with, because uh, it... It makes them light up, and you can see it from a long way away. All right, so red makes it light up, sure enough. But see that blue one back there doesn't light up. This red light doesn't affect it because the wavelength is bigger than the spacing of the unit cells inside that blue diamond. The unit cell makes it smaller as the um, as the stone is compressed more. And the distance between the carbon atoms gets smaller and smaller the, the deeper it forms and that's part of what makes the color in diamonds. It, it's not the like a pigment. It's the actual spacing of the unit cells. And that's determined by the depth of formation. Okay, so... Diamonds will glow all three colors. Boom. 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 And the whole thing glows. Uh, you know, when I'm hitting this with laser light going straight down, um, it's lighting up over here. <laughs> How does it do that? Well, it's doing that because this whole stone is connected together. It's carbon, all carbon. And it's squeezed together so closely it, they can share their four outer valence electrons with each other. Look at that in there. Isn't that spacey? I mean, there is lots and lots and lots of space inside that stone that you can't measure from out here. This is the, uh, the head of the Z-axis, and that's why that stuff is 
kind of collecting underneath of it. And you can see it running across the, the stone. The, the, these are planes of cleavage caused by slight imperfection in a row of atoms as they uh, get squeezed together. Maybe they're slightly imperfect for some reason. So here's the the other end of the Z axis right, right here, and you can see see the four different views. The this little angle here is right at that focus point. And this, maybe it's on this side, maybe it's this one, to uh, this one. Well, I mean, that's strange. See, these are all mirroring. See? This angle. This is the, the wider end, this is the narrower end. Small angle, big angle. Because it had to move. It's not magic, it, it's physics, it's geometry. It's the way things fit together. And those planes of cleavage are why we see four different viewpoints down the, looking down that point there. That's what that's from. <laughs> from those planes of cleavage. And what's happening is the, uh, the planes follow these angles. And if you look, this, this forms like a four-sided thing here. One, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Not this one so well, yeah, it does. Ah, yeah. oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. But I got kind of a twist there, right? and I think it's actually more like that. Flat sides and a four sided pyramid. Mm, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And on this side, one, two, three, four. And the one, two, three, four. Okay, now I can rotate it. 72 degrees. And I get pretty much the same symmetry. And I turn it 72 degrees again. And there it is again. 
Um, each iteration is 72 degrees, and that's, that's um, the result of close-packed cubic hexagonal. It's cubic in one direction and hexagonal in the other. They are 90 degrees out of phase with each other, which is why these little angles happen on those. But these are all angles that are um, that are created by the um, stacking order of the atoms in the unit cell that's a 13 atom unit cell there are six atoms around a central atom okay kind of like looking down here okay let's imagine each point each apex is an atom including this one here and then, and then there are six around the outside. And then there are three on top and three on the bottom. And that determines the way those, those are stacked, because they can be lined up differently, two different ways. And the way they line up determines whether you get cubic sem symmetry or hexagonal symmetry. But they're all based around this central atom and the six surrounding atoms. That's where diamonds get their symmetry from. Isn't that cool?